Welcome everybody! Today is, if I remember correctly, the second round of the Driver Swap Cup and we are here at Spa Francochamps. And I have timed that absolutely perfectly as the practice session is now over. Louis, hop in the car and race instead of sitting here and irritating me for two hours or something, please. But yes, we are here at Spa today. And I will quickly just look up the format of the race here. I think it's a... I'm not 100% sure how long the qualifying is, but it is a 60 minute race. I know that much. So let's take a look here. It is 20 minutes qualifying. That is not enough time 
for a lot of cars at Spa, in my opinion. But then we have a 60 minute race, uh, where hopefully we will have quite a bit of good racing. It's been a while since I've been here, and by a while I mean like four days or something. And I'm really excited to getting back into the racing here. I've missed it over the weekend. Let's head on board with, let's see, Oscar Haupt in the Ryder Reader Engineering Esports car, the 76 McLaren here. Those colors remind me quite a lot of the old Mercedes. Or well, yeah, Mercedes in general. The old Mercedes F1. Alex Amos is the car leading the entire field here on this outlap. Driving an Audi R8, that is a bold choice if you ask me. I think he might well be the only Audi on track today. No, there's one more, I believe. One more. Matthias Preche. Bold move. I also have a Bentley, I think I saw. Didn't we? Yes, the boat lid driven by Matthew Hughes. I don't think I've ever seen him drive anything but a Bentley, if I'm being honest. As we should have a few cars out on their hot laps now. Alex Amos is one of those cars. There's just a massive train coming down through the last two corners here now. Everybody want to make uh, make way and make sure that they they have a big gap to the cars behind and in front of them. Uh, quite a lot of cars here trying to build up a gap as even more cars are slowly getting towards the back here It's going to be interesting to see if Alex Amos will be affected by the train that is going on down the bus stop. Don't think so. No, it looks like it's all cleared up a bit. So let's see what he can bring with him for this first flying lap here. Two eighteen point five is the time to beat. 
and it has already been beaten. 279 by Julian Vambro. As that has been beaten by Damian Konchik with a 217.5. That is a monster lap if you ask me. Mark Anaker in the UCC Sim Racing here set a time of 220.7. Followed right behind him is Michael Muthen in the Cryonics Racing Porsche of car number one. So let's have a look here again what's going on. A lot of times are being said here. In P18, we find Louis Ricard with a best lap of 220.7. He's right back into uh, into ACC after being on i renting, sorry, i racing for quite a while now. Something has happened to one of the cars. Car 28, Anaker is now in the pits. I saw a yellow flag. I wonder if that's on purpose, or if it's had a spin or something, and then decided just to park the car. Damon Konchik still reta uh, retains his, uh, his pole position here. Followed quite closely by Daryl Young in the Big Brain Racing Car 30. That is a BMW, a beautiful BMW, BMW livery as well. Jesus Christ, I know words. As Callum Jones is looking towards setting his first valid lap here so far today. His last one was a 218.7, but it seems to have been invalidated. So let's see what he can cook up here. As he manages P8 with a 218.485. So we have a new leader. We have Denise Katonka. Katonka, I mean. With a 217.3, that is a wicked fast time. And way too fast for me to be able to keep up with. For more than a few corners, probably. Daryl Young is looking towards another lap here. Let's see if he can improve. I made 217.7. What can he manage here? It is an improvement. It is a 217.387. <coughs> Top three are separated by 0.075. On second. As Vincenzo Senatore and Greg Ellis are sitting on identical lap times here with 218s, 218.282s for the both of them. That is interesting.
How about now? Okay, it seems like I had accidentally somehow muted myself, but we are back up and running now. We haven't missed that much. I don't think I've been muted for that long, probably. But in the lead, we have Damien Konchik here. With a 216.9. Goodbye, Hayden. Some interesting technical difficulties here, for some reason. I it seems, it seems like I have pressed the wrong button. As Bjorkman here seems to have had some sort of incident leading to him returning to the garage. Okay, he has just pulled off to the side of the road. That is far less interesting than I thought it would be. Matthew Yudes here driving the absolute tires off of this Bentley here. Setting it a P11 with a 217.8. That is extremely fast and he's less than a second away from P1. In a Boatly, ladies and gentlemen. Keep that in mind. In a Boatly. Julian Vambro is improving almost half a second on their previous lap here coming around the final corners there will be a major improvement for him if the lap is valid which it is it is up in p3 with a So let's see here, Konchik is improving, he's only one corner into his current lap, but he is nonetheless improving. A rouge section up here, a place on track where you can lose a lot of time very quickly. Sounded kind of like he hit the rev limiter there on that car. Let's go on board with him for the rest of this lap, I think. Down to the final corner here. Let's see what he can make of this lap. He is improving. And he is improving by quite a margin. As he will set a lap with 216.6. That is 
much faster than I would ever dream of going. As Callum Jones now only has a few corners left, he's up on his previous best time. He's sitting in P11 as of right now. I wonder if he can improve. Yes, he can. Only by two spots, however, but that is still inside of the top 10. As Matthew Yudes here and Lorenzo Cotelesa are sitting on identical lap times as well here. We've seen it once before today they are both on Bad and ARP, good luck, yes, a very big good luck to all the drivers out here today, they are absolute madmen for even attempting to conquer the beast that is known as the Spa Frankenstein corner. Corner? Circuit. Sorry, as we have Lewis Ricard coming around the final corner here, let's see if he can improve, he's sitting in P36, he's looking to improve a tiny bit here, up in P28. That is a good improvement. I seem to have missed some um, some chats here on YouTube. Barbecued Possum, welcome in. Sorry for not responding for close to 15 minutes. I seems seems like I've had some issues with the YouTube chat here. Uh, but yes, the track is now up to optimum, and we have seen quite a few fast laps here today. As P1 is Damien Konchik with a 2.16.6, followed closely by Michael Muthen. Then we have Daryl Young and Dennis Katonka, all in the 2.16s, followed quite closely by Julian Vamro, John Gray, Robert Bjorkman, Vincenzo Senatore, Matthew Yudes here still on a lap. He's not really looking like he's improving. And running out the top 10 is Christian Graniero. Let's see what Matthew Yudes can do here. As he did not improve, unfortunately, for him. But yes, here you can see the top <coughs> top 20, actually. There's some interesting times here. Some really quick times as well. Much faster than I would ever, uh, ever dream of doing.
as the race is almost about to start please do not forget to like and subscribe over on youtube and to drop us a follow over on twitch it is greatly appreciated we're trying to grow every single day and we are we are growing every single day as well so yeah if you like the content that we're putting out here if you like the racing feel free to also join us on discord i'm not 100 percent sure of the commands but let's see if this works Uh, not 100% sure it did. If you look up from Eau Rouge, it's so steep from T1 down there. It really is. I think it's something like eight stories. I think it's eight stories. Didn't realize it till a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's once you realize it, it's almost impossible to ever forget that. Let's see if this command here works for our Discord. It does not. There we have a Discord link leading to Togo Motorsport. Thank you, Bad and ARP. Bit of a savior here over on the Twitch channel. Forty, just over forty seconds now until the formation start. The formation lap starts. So let's take a quick look at the field here yet again. The top ten is Damon Konchik, Michael Muthen, Daryl Young, Dennis Katanka, uh, Tyler Hobson. That is the car with uh, Julian Vamro in as well. Ryan O'Sullivan, I think he shared car with someone else. Robert Borkman, Vincenzo Senatore, and Matthew Yudes, but I do think that it is T. Winch driving. It just haven't updated yet. Because I see different names in the ACC race control, and that sometimes confuses me. Of the formation lap has now started, Damian Konchik is the man to try to defeat him. That is the words I was looking for. I don't think all the cars have got him moving yet. Here we have Johnny, ya bad boy, and the Wyvern, Wyvern Racing. Car 31 Lamborghini. So they are getting around to moving any second now. so fun to see that we have almost a full 
grid here today. I think 50 cars are signed up and there's 42 cars on track. So no doubt we'll see some good action here today. There is a possibility of a red flag if more than 20% of the of the field have a crash within, I think it's the first two sectors of the first lap. What happens then is that the cars are returning to pits while the uh, live stewards are sorting the situation out and then the race will restart. Only a few more corners left now until we have a green flag. As we go on the wing here of the beautiful Porsche. I think, the, I think it's the Porsche 9... Let's see. Uh, that is the 9... Is it the 911.2 or the 911... A 992, I think it is, actually. I know numbers. <laughs> but yeah, two Porsches are running out. P1 and P2 here, as we only have two more corners to go. They're eager to get going here. Oh, my bad the green flag is around the first corner i just remember where we could pass some 992 you think swan nick rear wing is 911 yeah i just confuse uh, i just basically confuse the numbers i do that all the time as we have rounded the final corner and we will have a green flag any second now So it will be interesting to see what happens up a rouge here. If the drivers are aware that <laughs> you may go three wide up a rouge, which is never a good option. And there we go, green flag. As Konchik is the car leading the field up a rouge. We have a major, major crash further down the field, I think. That is, without a shadow of doubt, gonna be a red flag. Oh, wow, yeah. That is a massive, massive, massive incident. Including, I think, half the field almost. That is gonna take absolute ages to sort out as there's still cars that don't know what to do here. And yeah, there is a red flag. As I think everybody has just straight up returned to the pits here. Yeah, that is a red flag and a half, everybody. This is probably going to take the stewards quite some time to figure out. And yeah, barbecued possum, that is one major incident. Let's, let's take a look at it here again. Oh, oh, that is m not really supposed to be like that. 
this is the view of the car in last place here. It's probably wise to, to have backed off a bit here quite early. And wow. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a photo here. There we go. That is an interesting move. This is gonna take the stewards quite some time to solve, so we will be here for quite a while, I believe. I'm not even gonna try to look into who's at fault here. I, I'm gonna leave that all in the hands of the stewards. But what I can tell you is that they will most likely probably guaranteed be someone getting penalized for this. Yeah, Louis, it really did want, uh, well, it did went well, it did go well, oh Jesus Christ, I know English, I swear, it's sometimes like you, you can't even believe that I'm, I'm not bilingual, but yeah, really, really, really interesting incident here, were you involved in it, or did you manage to, to get by? Swedish guys, oh really? Is 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 that really really the card you're gonna go for? Number ninety nine. Let's take a look here. What happened to Mister Lewis? Oh 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 wow yeah. I mean, there's not much you can do at that point. All uh, In all honesty, there's not much left to do. Oh, the server has been... Re not the server, but the, uh, the session has been restarted. So we will have a full formation lap yet again. Yeah, the worst part about the red flag is definitely that we have to sit through another uh, formation lap here. Almost as long as doing a drive through. Almost, almost. But yeah, we have a penalty in the race already. Car number 18, Marcus Rady. Rady has been given a. 25 second penalty for driving into the back of another car. 
could well be that this man is the one who started the entire thing. I think the worst part is probably waiting for the formation lap to get going again. Thirty seconds left now until race start number two. And how important is qualifying to you in a twenty four hour race? I mean it's not really important in the twenty four hours it's also because that point you can win, but important for the first three four hours to be out of the the mess so yeah, it's quite important and you know doing nice to be in front of them. All good so far, let's see you can keep it up, thank you. So you're currently in P fifteen. The cars are getting going again here, so let's hope for a cleaner race. There can only be one red flag per per event, per round. So whatever happens at the start of this race restart here, we'll just have to live with it. Only a few more corners left to go here now, so we're getting ready for race start number two.
long left now. One more corner to go. I'm going to perish of old age. You're not alone, man. You're not alone. It's a, it's a long, 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 long wait. Just a few more seconds now. We can get there. Please get there. What I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna hop on one of the cars towards the rear. Let's go with Mr. Lewis Ricard here, actually. Much cleaner so far. Seems like everybody's got through here. That is exactly what we want to see, but we still have one more tricky section left here before we can say that we are out scots free. There's a few more tricky sections. Oh wow, that is a send and a half by Robert Consett. Let's take a look at that again. I don't want to say that he aimed for him, but it really looks like Concert here outbraked himself quite heavily. As he's now down in absolute bottom. Further up the field, up in P5 slash... Shouldn't this be P1? Oh, here we have P1. Never mind. Dennis Tonka is running away second faster than Ryan O'Sullivan here. Because we have Callum Jones in P12 here, a Toga Esports driver. Togo Racing Team 2 driver, to be more specific, by the name of the team here. So we have Peter Romeo in the Togo Racing Team 1 car, the 205. Aston Martin here. In P21, looking to gain a few positions. As we in another Aston Martin Toga Racing Team 1 car, the number 5 of George Stevens in P31. As Johnny, your bad boy, seems to have had a bit of it. A few issues here down four seconds behind P41. It's a good thing seeing that nobody's retired yet. But yes, uh, yes, possum. Damien Konchik is now in P5. He has dropped a few positions. As who is this? Hendrik von der Hayden is according to everything here down in dead last now. Oh, he has gone off somewhere, it seems like. That is unfortunate. Beautiful looking car. 
the uh, number 70 McLaren here. I love the colors. Vivid Global Racing. As Denise, Dennis Katonka is running away here. Yes, close to two and a half seconds down to Rhino Salvan in P2. And Konchik has lost another place now to Bjorkman and is currently sitting in P6. Not how I expected this to go from him given how much faster he was in qualifying. No way we have taken the Porsche. Let's go Bjorkman the Swedish Verstappen. Yeah, Bjorkman up in P5 here for Poggers Racing in the 420, McLaren 720. Let's hope for the board with him for the here and see. There hasn't been a single point of contact in the second race of them. So we have a few cars in the pits already. The car of Damien Denisowski, George Stevens, Nikita Chuprov, and Morten de Buren. I wonder if they've had issues or if they simply are uh, doing their driver swap already to give another driver more time in the car will be interesting to see. As they are getting lapped by close to the entire field, I believe, now. No, 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 never mind. They have dropped a lot of positions, I think. No? Yet again, I'm sorry. They are being lapped. We had a brief yellow flag. Oh, not a brief yellow flag. We have a yellow flag on Sebastian Rabus. Let's see what happened to him here. Lost it up a rouge. That is unfortunate. But also something that very easily happens to even the best of us. So let's see here if car number five of George Stevens is looking to retire. They could potentially have a lot of damage and that is why they're sitting in the pits for so long, but they have been in the pits for a good few minutes now, I believe. I think this is also the car of Hayden Sweet, the owner of Toga here. If he can hear me and he wants to inform me on what is going on with their car, feel free to just stop by. As we head on board with Dennis Katanka, setting blistering speeds and fast lap times even in race pace.
Thank you so much for stopping by Barbecued Possum and good luck in the race. Let's see here. Matthew Yudes is in P6 in a Bentley, hunted viciously by the Aston Martin of Christian Graniero. It's looking, uh, they're both looking good here, P6 and P7, as the fastest lap of the race so far has been set by Damien Konchik with a 217.097. A bit further down, we have Davide Mandelaisi. Natoga by VM Tech car, car number 12, BMW. That is one bright McLaren in front of him, along to Tyler Hobson. I see if it can keep Mandelacy behind him. It's gonna be hard, Mandelacy is a good driver. And he's trying to find his way up here. He's sticking his nose in and backing out again, knowing that he cannot stick the nose in there and actually keep the car clean. Marcus Brady is in P13, but he also has a 25 second penalty. So he's not looking at retaining that position once the pit stops are coming through. As Dennis Katonka is really running away with this here, he has a 5 second lead down to Michael Newton, followed quite closely by Ryan O'Sullivan and Robert Dortman. Dortmund sitting steady in P4 here, Ryan O'Sullivan in P3, they are battling quite hard here. Quite a few battles, so many battles going on throughout the field that it's gonna be impossible for me to focus on all of them. Oh wow, really trying to stick the nose in here. Unfortunately, couldn't make the move happen, couldn't make it stick. Let's see if we can try anything down here, they're both running a tiny bit wide it seems like. Could well just be the line of their choosing. Bjorkman is now through on Sullivan for P3 here. So Sullivan seems to have lost a bit of time somewhere because Konchik is up in P4 and he has dropped position down two into uh, into P5 here now for Ryan O'Sullivan. Lopkins 28 has a good defense. Let's see, car 28 or P28. Car 28 is Mark Anaker here in the UCC Sim Racing car, battling a bit here with Ernest Morrison and who else seems to have a car confused here oh no it is just Nikita Chuprov a black a black a blue flag car that is why it's not showing up at the same place as Mark Anaker here
car 42 of George Stevens is back out on track here. It probably has been for a few laps now. But he is three, sec three laps behind basically the rest of the field. As Miosha's Mishik seems to have spun around or crashed or had some sort of incident? I wonder why he's just pulled off to the side of the road here. He's back into the pits now, it seems like. Wonder if he has probably maybe miscalculated a fuel as he has left the survey it seems like. P1 Katonke here is running away four seconds down to Michael Muthen. They're both sort of running away because it is a f an additional four seconds down now to Robert Brookman and Damien Konchik as Ryan O'Sullivan has lost a bit of time and is two seconds behind them in P5 followed closely by P6 Matthew Yudes here in the Bentley with Daryl Young Christian Graniero Vincenzo Sanatore all following close behind in that beautiful uh, need for speed most wanted based delivery that we had a discussion about last week Daniel Bourne is five seconds behind them. And one second behind him, we find David Mandelacy. Followed close by Tyler Hobson, Marcus Vrede, Matthias Pritche, and Matteo Gandrini. An additional second behind that, we have Greg Ellis. It is quite close here. The entire field down to Ernest Morrison or down technically to Lou Mack here. It's just a few seconds between all of them. That's Marco von Kedrowski here is sitting in P32 as we have a yellow flag for Mark Anneker who's probably run off the road here. Yeah, that is uh, that is uh, an incident and a half. Not something you want to see on a racetrack. But he got the car back up and running quite quickly. But that car is sliding all over the place and will be no match for Sebastian Rabies once Rabis, Rabies, Rabies sounds weird, but Rabis will go with who is now past him. The car of Mark, An Mark Anneker here having zero air for, air for, down force or arrow it seems like. But he is deciding, he has decided to stick out on track here. For at least a few more laps before the pit stops will most likely start rolling in. As Robert Workman is still in P3 here, he's doing a great race. And we have Marcus Vredi in P18. He seems to have lost five positions since we last saw him on track. Peter Romeo here in the Togo Racing Team, one car running in P20, clean good race so far with a best lap of 219.1.
but basically all cars that are in this massive train of cars here that basically makes up 80% of the field are gonna overtake Marcus Brady once he gets into the pits because he has that 25 second penalty for probably causing the big incident at green flag on the first race start that actually resulted in the red flag and the race restart that we have had here today. As we have some cars off track a bit further down the field, I just saw a few yellow dots on the track map didn't notice any numbers but they all seem to be running again as we have a bit of contact between a few of the cars up ahead here Luke Amrell and Matthias Pritche I wonder if he was involved in that incident so we will see here now he is involved in the incident with another car in front probably is that the 18 yes it is the 18 car of Sebastian Armstrong As Damien Kontrick is up in P4 here, hitting 216s on race pace is massive. Closing in a bit on Robert Gorkman here, who still has three, almost four seconds up to Muthen, who also has four seconds up to Katanka here in P1. It's going to be interesting to see who here wants to go for a move. Is it going to be Bjorkman still keeping p3 here is Kontrick gonna go for a move on him HL yo Bonten is a legend and subscribed to the channel yo hl bomb thank you so much for the sub over on youtube i believe that was welcome in how are you this fine evening or day or morning or middle of the night depending on where you are As the car of Daryl Young has been given 30 seconds penalty and Graniero has been given a 5 second penalty, I wonder what that's for. None of them have showed up so far. Oh, yes, they have. Never mind. Oh, there's a lot of penalties rolling in here. Car number one gets a five second penalty. Let's see what that is for. That is for forcing another car off track. Then we have car 30 gets a 30 second penalty for pushing two cars off track. Car number 787 is moving on the braking and that penalizes him with a five second penalty. Car number 12, Mandalacy, gets a penalty for a push and pass. 104 for going on the inside. Does it turn into Lacombe's forcing another car off track? Uh, oh, wow. Uh, 47 for spinning a car around at source Car 16 is penalized. I think that is the big penalty. Yeah, from the first race. Car number 18 has been given five second penalties for dangerous driving force another car off track. What is going on further down here? As we have car 42 
who isn't careful with slow cars of Radeon, kills one car, uh, has been given 15 seconds penalty for that. There's 20 seconds to car number 7 for a poor rejoin, causing another car to lose 10 positions. And then there's 15 second, there's a 15 second penalty on car 29 for what seems to be slamming the door shut on another driver, causing that driver to turn him, causing a massive pileup. I wonder if that could, no, that, I wonder what that could possibly be for. As the penalties are absolutely flowing in now. They're flying in like never before. Bjorkman is still sitting confidently in P3 here with Katanka three seconds faster, or at least three seconds in front of Michael Muthen, who has a five second penalty. As the penalties are really, really, really raining in here now. A lot of cars in the pits here. We have Henrik van der Heiden, Mark Anneker, Aaron Ball, Leo Mack, Nicholas Urbantet, Ryan O'Sullivan, Callum Jones. Those are the cars in the pits right now. As Konchek is looking to get a move done here, as Brookman is entering the pits here. Konchek is now up in P3, but I wonder if he is also looking towards pitting quite soon. Kotanka still has a two second lead that is growing smaller by the minute down to Michael Muthen here. A lot of cars are still here in the pits. Vrede is the one that will lose. I wonder if he is actually the one losing the most time here now, given that other cars have received higher or similar penalties. As John Gray here in the number 14 Big Brain Racing car sits in P... Oh wow, I don't know, P22, I believe. There's still... 
says P31 on the overall display, but that cannot be right because he has gone past all the pits. Yep, there we go, P22. Further up the field we have Lewis Ricard almost making contact here with the car in front of him. I wonder if that's the C Sim Racing car. It is clearly having a blue flag to his name. As he is now entering the pits. There's a long, long, long pit lane here. Entire pit area. It's almost as, uh, it takes almost as long time to go through the pits as it does to go through one lap. As Michael Muthen is the new race leader here. The six second gap down to Damian Kalmchik. I wonder if that is growing ever, ever shorter. As Togo Racing Team number two now has Elias Fernando in their car. Sitting here in P25, followed closely by Oliver Shakespeare, also known as Cheese, a fellow commentator here at Toga in the Toga Racing Team number one instead. As Car 555, now driven by Wolfgang Kuhn, sits in P33. Wolfgang is a highly known driver here in Toga. He has been in many of our previous events. And he's such a nice guy to drive with, and he's such a nice guy to keep a conversation with. As we have Mark Rickmeyer in the UCC Sim Racing Car 28, and sitting in P36 or 37, it seems like. As George Stevens is now coming into the pits and a bit further up the field. Oh no, Lewis Ricard has been given a drive through penalty. That is absolutely devastating for his race. He is going to have to drive through the entire pits one more time, losing him minutes, I believe. Neo Ericsson here in P16 in the number 12 BMW ran by Toga by BM Tech. As the leader here, Damien Konchik, is in the pits now, meaning that Dennis Katonka might actually take the position back. He is a minute behind 
but Konchik has yet to pit, I believe. The car behind him, Daryl Young, has a 20 second penalty as we now also do have Lewis Ricard here going for his drive through. And I wonder if Katanka can actually keep uh, or get his lead position back here now. The gap is 50 seconds up to Vincenzo Senatore, but they are all in the pits. Followed closely by Johannes Preis in the number one Cryonox Racing Porsche running P5 here. And it sure looks like Katanka will maintain his lead as he only has one more corner to go before he can start overtaking the cars in the pits. Should not be much of an issue for him here. And yes, he will indeed maintain the lead and Rainer Athens that here in the big brain racing car 913 is coming out right behind him and Johannes Pries here and it is close 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 as we have a car going slow possibly to just let the other drivers by and Hayden Sweet is now out in the number five Togo racing team Aston Martin here as Lewis Ricard is or Craig Taylor is yet to serve their drive through it tells me. I wonder what will happen with the drive through that they have. I wonder if that is uh, a decision that they have made not to, uh, not to serve that penalty just yet. As Athens that is running... No, that cannot be right. Oh, never mind. The car's best lap so far is a 216.9, but it tells me that Rainer Athens' stats best lap is a 225.1, possibly because that is not even his first lap yet. Interesting. Potentially just a ACC control bug. I a ACC race control bug, I would believe. But yes, everybody, make sure to like and subscribe over on YouTube and to follow us over on Twitch. And also make sure you join the Discord. It should be down below in the section, in the info section beneath both streams, I would presume. Otherwise, I'd have to talk to Hayden. Uh, but yes, make sure you join the Discord, you follow over on Twitch, and you like and subscribe over on YouTube if you want to see and join races like this. It's always great fun here at Toga. It's never a boring day. As Dennis Katanka has a one second lead down to Johannes Preis. As car 555. If I can find him, seems to have been going a bit slower, possibly just letting other drivers by, it seems like. Zach Morgan in the UCC Sim Racing, car 29 here. He's running in P31, as now we have Craig Taylor in the pit lane. And I wonder if he is serving their drive through the Lewis Ricard had.
as they are now exiting the pits here, car 28 of Mark Rickmeyer seems to have had a moment here. Oh, the 15 seconds playback here doesn't seem to show anything substantial. The car must have had a massive crash, it seems like. Wonder if we can go back even further. Oh, we're stuck with this for a minute now. I was supposed to click the 30 seconds, I accidentally clicked the 60 seconds instant replay. So we're stuck with this now for an additional 45 seconds. I'm sorry guys. And so we'll see brief yellow flag on another car uh, that has seemingly disappeared from the timings now. I wonder if that is just... Oh, here is the bug. It was Alessandro Panati who had a yellow flag to his name, but it doesn't really seem like much has been going on with his car. As Denis Katonka here running in P1. One second in front of Johannes Preis, who's then five seconds in front of Rainer Athenstedt here. Luke Wilson in the Poggers Racing Car 420 took over from uh, Robert Bjorkman and is running in P4. That is a good result on a fast, fast, fast car. Janus Preys here, trying, 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 trying to close the gap up to Katonke here. It's less than a second now. It's the race logics um, dashboard in the bottom left is vibrating like crazy in that car now. As Kusia Terakov in the NCR Most Wanted car of 627, the BMW. I think that is the... Yes, that is the BMW with the Need for Speed Most Wanted livery. A beautiful livery. I've said it multiple times and, I've, and I'll say it again. Samuel Brakstad, our resident Norwegian guy here. Uh, in the Big Brain Racing car 47, out on track. Our other resident Norwegian man, Elias Fernando, with a Spanish flag, but I know that he's Norwegian. Uh, out on track as well, and it will potentially soon be the Battle of the Norwegians. The Norwegian, Spain, Spanish, something. But behind Braxted, we have Christian Moller in another big brain racing car, the BMW number 30. Lorenzo Cotalesa running in the SGP Swap Togo car here. 787 Aston Martin car here. That is a beautiful car and it's a fun car to drive as well. Tom Winch in the Apex Predators Racing Bentley. A beautiful livery, a beautiful car. And running in P13 is not bad in a car like that. As let's take a look here. Sandro Drager, Alessandro Panati, Samuel Fister, 
and Liam Hinman have all been penalized. So we have 15 minutes left of the race here. Fernando's father is Spanish. I am aware. That is why I call him the Norwegian Spanish guy. Or should I maybe call him the Spanish Norwegian? But welcome, Anita. Welcome. Oh, let's take a look here. Alessandro Panati has had some sort of incident. And there has also been an incident for... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What on earth is going on here? Let's take a closer look here. One car off track. Rejoins. Crashes into another. Out of control. And he hits two more cars. That is going to be a major, major, major penalty for someone here. Now, that is an unfortunate crash involving multiple cars. And the stewards will not be happy about that incident. Katonka here still running in P1, but Price is closing in on him ever so slightly, lap by lap. And he is really looking towards trying to get this P1 position here from Katonka. It is only 0.2 seconds separating them, but then they have an additional 10 seconds down to Athens that in P3. They are surely running away with this, but it will be interesting to see if they can battle throughout the rest of the race here. This place might be looking towards a dive here. Let's take a look. Side by side through the bus stop. He will have the inside line. Can he make the move happen? Yes, he can. And now it's all in Katonka's hand to try to get back in through this small little hairpin here. But there's just enough. There's just not enough for him. And Praise will try to run away with this now. Katanka is really looking for a place to make a move happen here. He really wants that P1 position back here. Athens that running 11 seconds behind. He has Luke Wilson right behind him. Right up the rear wing here of Athens that. But down the field we have the other, uh, one of the Norwegian guys, Samuel Braxted here. Uh, in the big brain racing car. A bit further down the field again, we do have Oliver Shakespeare running in P18. Let's head on board with him for a few corners. Bella guy down here in the pits now, one of the cars that was involved in the major incident down in the bus stop a few laps back now. One lap back I think it may have been actually. Could potentially be looking at retiring the car, hopefully not. We do want to see all cars out on track as Panati, Hinman and Fister has all been given penalties each as Craig Taylor has another drive through. I wonder if they not served the first one. But that is potentially the second penalty that they have been given 
the second drive through penalty that they've been given by the game. Pavel Adolfovic here in P38 has what I believe is a blue flag on his name because he has a big brain racing car right behind him. Probably that of P34. Yes, indeed, that is the car of Chris Ramaker. Running in P39 and two laps behind almost the rest of the field here. We have Hayden Sweet. Not the best race he's had in his career, but it's good of him to just stick through and complete the race. Experience on track is always what you need. Am I right, Hayden? You know, we both know I'm right. Praise has been building almost a two second gap here now down to Katanka. As we have a car off track, the car of Mark Rickmeyer again seems to have had some sort of issues and that is still not enough time in the replay to take a look at that and I will not make the mistake of going back an entire minute now. But he has not had the best race of his career as well here. Few issues throughout this evening. Rainer Athens closest competitor here, Luke Wilson in the 420 Poggers Racing is trying to battle Athenstad here for the final place on the podium. I wonder if eight, min if eight minutes is going to be just enough for Wilson to try to get closer and closer to Athenstad and try to take that position from him. Preseer is running away with, the, with this uh, victory here so far. 2.2 seconds down now to Katonka. A bit further down in P5 we do have John Gray in a big brain racing car. He is trying to build a gap down to Ben Seat here. It was followed closely by Lorenzo Codlesa. The big brain racing car driven by Christian Muller here. One of many, 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 one of many, many big brain racing cars we have out on, on the track here today. Always a pleasure to see their cars on the grid. They're beautiful liveries and good drivers as always. Tom Winch here in P14, still running the Bentley quite good here. P14 in a car that nobody really drives is not bad at all. As P20, Daniel Lund here seems to have been given 15 seconds of penalties. A bit further down the field, we still have Mark Rickmeyer here. Heavy damage on that BMW, and I wonder if he's just going to stick through to the end of the race here. It's just five minutes left. I don't think it's worth pitting. Shaking in here with Oliver Shakespeare is doing a good race in P18 here. Bit of damage on that f on the front of that Aston Martin as well. 
I mean, during a one hour long race with 40 other cars, having damage is not that unusual as Tino Rai Reinsch is just getting past Shakespeare. No real issues for him here. Praise now has a three second lead down to Katonka, who then has a 15 second difference down to Athens that are but Luke Wilson is looking towards the inside here. That is unfortunate. Oh yes, it is just enough. Just enough for him to get the dive bomb working. And he has potentially taken P3. He has... Oh, this is close. He has taken P3 as of right now. As of right now, Luke Wilson is in P3. With four minutes left of the race, he gets the move done. Wilson here has built up almost a second gap now down to Athenstead, but there's still 16 seconds up to Katonka and Priest here running in P1 and P2. So there's only two minutes left, two minutes left of the race now. We have Chris Ramacher here in the Big Brain Racing car 673, an American. A pretty rare sight to see here at Toga. We have a few of them. But they're mostly here for the endurance events. Dennis Stark in another of the UCC simulation cars here, running in P35. A bit further up the field in P32, we have the triple five car of Wolfgang Kuhn. Even, even further up the field, we have Zach Morgan in another of the UCC sim racing cars. Keep in mind that after the race, uh, I will have a few minutes for um, for driver interviews. And the leader is now on the final lap. But as said, we do have the opportunity for drivers that have participated in the race to stop by for a quick interview after the race is over. Uh, it is 100% optional to do. I'm not forcing anybody to do it, but it would be lovely to get a few people in there so we can have a chat for a few minutes. We are running a bit behind schedule, so it's not going to be the longest interviews here. Just a few quick questions and some uh, small talk for, for a minute or so. But you're more than welcome to stop by if you've raced today.
as the timer has now run out and from the looks of it Johannes Price will take it all home there's still a good few corners left so I'm not gonna say too much here Last corner here for Jonathan Priest. He has six seconds down to Katanka now. As he has taken home the second round of the Toga Motorsport Driver Swap Club Club Cup here at Spa Francochamps. Great race from him as Katanka is now getting across the line. And so will Luke Wilson in P3. Great race from all the drivers here, as Katanka seems to have been given a 130 second penalty. I wonder if he has not done his driver... He must have missed to do his driver swap, I think. Because that is the only way you should be able to get such a high penalty, I believe. As all the drivers are crossing the finish line now, let's head down to Oliver Shakespeare. He still has a good few corners left. But that should in theory mean... Yes, that does mean that Luke Wilson has been given P2 instead. As Shakespeare is having just a few more corners here now. As Stefan Blay has, uh, Stefan Blay and Chris Ramacher has been given 130 second penalties as well. This is interesting because I don't think they have soloed the race. Because I feel like I've seen the car names or the names in each of these cars swap a few times now. But nonetheless, they have been given penalties. So let's just quickly save the replay and wow yeah that uh, that has been an interesting race today as we are now heading in to the interview room here so it does look like we have a few drivers interested in a conversation here let's drag the first of them in mr lewis ricard hello jess hello how was the race for you today uh absolutely awful well, I assume really you were driving. You were really? driving with Craig, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like me to really drag good. him in here as well? Yeah. Bring it. Bring us out in here. Hello, Craig. Hello. How was the race? Uh, absolutely shite. <laughs> uh, today so, was not the day not, then, I guess. For not knowing we a race like ten minutes before the start of it, I think we did pretty well. <laughs> You did good, Lewis. This is your first uh, non ironing event in how long? Oh, like a year, probably. Probably a re around a year now, yeah. Um, yeah, the race went quite bad. Oh shit, my mic's not even in the right place. Uh, oh, there we go. Now we can probably hear you. Yeah, shite race. Um, 
Any plans Louis. for uh, for solder, uh, Craig, around who you're driving with? Are you uh, taking I, Lewis I, again, or uh, are you trying to find someone uh, potentially better? I'm not sure if Charlie will be up to it. If Lewis is down, I'm down. Yeah. If we can get the Lexus going, then I'll come back. Well, we haven't got any points, so, you know, doing a car swap isn't losing anything. Yeah. That is what I did in the rookies. <laughs> <laughs> I lost one point because I switched the car mid-season. <laughs> yeah, one, one point is quite a lot there, you know, you got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, it really, really is. That's like, that's uh, like a whole season total for you, Chase. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, tough race out here today. I, how did the red flag at the start of the race affect you guys? Fuck. Oh. <laughs> uh, we got I a swap say, Yeah, we were, we were going fine for about 100 meters, and then it didn't go very fine. Mm. Like, uh, if everyone behind us had break. Same way we braked, it would have all been okay. But a few people didn't break, and a lot of people just a, didn't break. A wave. It was a wave that kind of was, everything at the front was stopped, and everything in the back just came piling in. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I had the best seats for the show. I'll let you guys know, and uh, it seems like surprisingly enough. Only one car was found guilty by the stewards. And from what I could see, it looked like a lot of cars were driving into each other, left, right, and center, but apparently one uh, caused by only one single car. Uh, I, uh, during the red flag, I looked up the front, and it was literally almost a bit of net code that happened that caused all of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> are you sure it was net code, or are you just so like, infused yeah. in the iRacing way? Oh. It, to me, it looked like netcode, but it's so probably something different in this game. Yeah, and over on but iRacing, you've seen your fair have... amount of netcode. Yes, more than enough of it. <laughs> I think we have one great achievement in this race that has happened. <laughs> that I may have caused the chain reaction that eventually led to Hayden having a big crash. Oh, no. I saw that you guys had at least one drive through as well. Oh, uh, so... Uh, we had a stop. big That's problem with the pit stop. So the first pit stop, I pit the pit limiter like I would in eye racing, but I forgot in this game you can't turn the pit limiter on until you're below fifty. So I'd hit it, hit the brakes, and then hit the throttle again when you're in the pit box, and oh, we'd no. shot over fifty. Spending. But then coming down the pit lane, I realised that I didn't have highlights for the pit box. And all the banners were appearing above the pit box, so I physically couldn't see our pit box. So I drove through the pit lane, basically the drive through. Oh wow! Got a drive through for speeding. Came round. Then we came in. The second pit stop went pretty much the pit stop as you went normally. <laughs> then Craig went in to do the drive through, and he somehow, by the grace of God, didn't get a drive through for crossing the line at sixty kilometers an hour. Oh wow. Yeah. Um that was something. Yeah, that was a bit interesting. We have a lot of other drivers in the waiting room now, so I am gonna leave you guys down in the general hangout. But thanks for stopping by and it was good of you guys to finish the race despite the drive through and the interesting pit strategy. <laughs> May I say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Lewis has got balls of steel. I know he has. I know he has. I've seen the man drive. He, he was fighting people off a of rouge, and that was fucking beautiful to see. So yeah, I'm gonna leave you guys to it, and thanks for stopping by. Enjoy, enjoy. Bye. Right. Cheese. Hello. Hi. How was the race today? Um, I think. Uh, as an individual driver, frustrating, and as a team manager, equally if not more so, frustrating. Yeah, uh, it was I mean, quite hard out there today. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have a single car that wasn't involved in an incident at some point. Um, we had we were wiped out by a guy who was essentially out of control from another incident. Um, that gave us twenty seconds of damage to finish race with. Uh, yeah, that hurt. Uh, the car was just so slow after that. I was in the 21s for 
essentially the whole of my last stint from that damage. At some point, um, it did feel like every single car on the like on the entire grid was actually involved in some sort of incident. It was massive chaos out there today, but you guys sort of still avoided it quite a lot, I would say. Yeah, we still had uh, you know we still had three cars that came home in the top twenty, which a field where the top 26 drivers were covered by like 1.4 seconds in qualifying is no mean feat you know oh no um, by no means like that is good without without the damage and stuff realistically we could have had two cars inside the top 10 um but you know we we take what we can get in races where there's this much chaos the, as a whole the lads did a really good job of avoiding the vast majority of it which is all i can ask them um but yeah overall probably uh overall probably a better than last week based on the strength of the field um even though the results overall actually they were not um um because of yeah because the strength of field was just so crazy compared to last week uh that although the numbers look worse actually in the in the grand scheme of things it was probably an overall a better result especially with the amount of chaos but um yeah, yeah, it's just just really frustrating, you know, watching the first stint with Peter on board. We had two Ferraris in front who were battling each other so hard that I thought they were both going to die. Um, there was a few moments where there was contact there, turning across the nose of the Aston to try and dissuade us from going for a move and stuff, which is not the type of racing that we want to see here at Toga. Um, but yeah, Peter did a really good job of keeping his nose clean. Uh, and then I got in the car and it all went south pretty quickly. How did the uh, the red flag and the incident leading up to it, uh, how did it affect you guys? Um, it gave Peter a chance to go to the loo, which was really handy. Oh, that, that's perfect then. Um, but yeah, I mean, Peter saw it happen. It was literally like the row in front of him where it all started with the Lamborghini. So Peter had pretty much the best view of it. He was like the literally like the second or third car behind the start of the crash. So he had literally he had he had eyes on it the whole way through, um, but yeah, just you know, disheartening because we had the pace today. Um, even if it didn't look like it from the numbers, you know, when the field is so close and you've got guys like Damien, who were who were setting ridiculously fast lap times in the nine one three Porsche, um, being anywhere inside the top half of the field is is a massive credit to the guys. Um, but yeah, you know, onwards and upwards, we we look to the next one and uh, see what we can pull there. Yeah, next one is uh, Solder. How are you looking forward to that race? Uh, yeah, it should be good. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm here. Peter, unfortunately, isn't. So it'll be um, we'll we'll have to look and see who I can get in the uh, in the car to to join me in the Aston Martin for the Solder race. Personally, one of my favourite tracks. I love Solder. Um, it's been a it's been a favorite for me ever since Jimmy Broadbent started his uh, twenty three hours of Zolder for mine mental health. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a brilliant little track. You know, the curbs will kill you. There's no runoff. It's all just gravel. Um, you're naming the all track the reasons. Really punishing. Yeah, you're naming all the reasons I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, see, for me, that's why I love it because it's like an old style, an old style of track where it's uh, kind of similar. It's kind of similar to uh, Donington, Snitterton, and Brands Hatch, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very similar. You know, the walls are quite close. Um, the runoff is is grass and gravel. There's no, there's no mistake that won't cost you at Zolda, which is what I like. Um, the only disadvantage is that it's rather narrow, which, based on the driving standards that we've seen the last two weeks, may not be the best storm of chaos to uh to have happen but we'll wait and see yeah it'll be interesting to see how uh, how the field adapts to a much 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 wider track next week because i think today we had probably the uh the track with the most runoff i would probably say well on this calendar probably yeah because the this calendar doesn't go to any of the tracks with big runoff like uh like silverstone or or France, so yeah. Uh, funny you mention it because we have Silverstone as the last round. Oh right, okay. So Silverstone would probably be the track that has the most runoff out of the calendar then. But without going to like yeah, without going to France or like Barcelona, it's not gonna. Uh, funny you mention it because we have Barcelona, Barcelona as well. <laughs> okay, so Barcelona and Silverstone are the two with the most runoff then, because they're made for FIA Grade One certification, which means they've got loads of concrete runoff because the FIA are wimps. Yep. 
basically. Uh, would be interesting to see how they would cope with Solar. Yeah, it is going to be interesting. Uh, let the chaos ensue, as they say, because I'm sure it's going to. Right. Um, I've, I'm going to hop to the general hangout quickly to debrief with Hayden. Yeah, um, I'll be I there will, in a uh, bit. Tell Hayden to, uh, to stay there for a few minutes, please. Yeah, I will. Perfect. I yep. will see you guys in a minute. Okay, let's bring in the next guy, Mr. Davide Mandelazi. Davide. Hello. Hello, Shaz. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Quite good. Tired, but all good. It was a long race today, a long evening. Yeah, it was. So how 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 did the race go for you today? Um, quite well, considering all the action that went off on the track, starting from uh, P13 with a crazy lap by me, I think. Uh, in that conditions, it was close to my personal best, like four tenth of my personal best, but not on optimal conditions. So I was quite happy with it and also quite surprised to see that it was only P12 that I um, qualified. And then uh, we had a race uh, in which, let's say, one particular guy or two just uh, caused us a lot of a lot of trouble, and uh, we we managed to still keep a position uh, from where we started and and finish P twelve, which is the the highest uh, Togays per car um, finish. So I, I think it's quite a good result for us for the VM Tech uh, per. Toga Motorsport uh, car. It was our first entry and our first uh, uh, first race. So, yeah. How did uh, how did the red flag uh, scenario affect you guys? Um, maybe cost us a little bit uh, on the first lap. I think because the first the first time we were ahead of the crash, uh, so it didn't affect us uh, in any way. And when we restarted, I had a. Um, uh, it's not like I had a slower start. It seems like other guys had a faster one, uh, but still, yeah, not not really much affected by it. Yeah, it was it was interesting seeing it from uh, from the commentators' point of view. It was a massive, massive incident. Probably, in my in my experience probably one of the biggest incidents we've ever had here at Toga I, I would probably be quite comfortable saying that it was massive chaos out there yeah I believe it I think I'm gonna watch the replay back and, uh, and the stream also because I wanna see you commentating it and, uh, and all the good stuff go for it I am um, gonna drag you down to the general hangout and talk to Elias for a few minutes as well okay but good race good today and I will see you all I will see you next week most likely yeah hopefully not in a not in a war or anything but <laughs> yeah yeah see I'll you. see you next week good night see you. okay let's bring in the final guy here Elias Fernando Elias, welcome. Hello. How was the race uh, for you today? Uh, it started pretty good, and then uh, we got taken out by someone someone uh, rejoining the track after they had run wide in uh, at the bus stop chicane, and they just took us out, spun us around, and uh, we had to stand still for like 15, 10 seconds, and we lost, I think it was P25 after that. Oh wow, yeah, that is major, major chaos. Uh, the red flag situation, from my point of view, m might well be the biggest thing we've had here at Toga before. Uh, how did you plan around the restart? How did it affect you? Uh, with the first start, uh, we were ahead of the crash, so it didn't affect us too much, and... Uh, we got a big gap to all the cars that crashed behind, so that was it was good. Uh, but uh, uh, then the red flag came out, and the second restart, uh, it was 
almost like yeah, Mandel Lacey said, it was we had the same good start, but the some of the cars behind us had, had a better end up to uh, through what's that straight called? Uh, the Camel uh, Straight. Yeah, the Camel Straight. Uh, uh, we lost, I think, what, two places or something. Uh, yeah. But other than that, it was pretty good. It didn't affect us too much. Yeah, are you looking forward to Solder next week? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the chicanes. It's horrible with this car. Yeah, so you and I, we we shared a hatred for, for Solder then. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, your mother uh, decided to join us in the YouTube channel, as yeah. always when you're racing. Uh, <laughs> she mentioned that your father is Spanish, and so yeah. I wanted to ask you, uh, would you like to be uh, known as Norwegian or Spanish when it comes to the commentating side of things? Oh, uh, to be honest, I don't know. I might go with both of them then. Yeah. If that's okay with you, of course. Yeah, that's okay. Perfect. I will take you down to the general hangout where I will join you guys in a, just a few minutes. I'm going to wrap this show up here. Good racing, and I look forward to seeing you on track next week, even though you may not look forward to being on track. <laughs> yeah. Good race from you today. I will see you guys in a bit. Thank you. That is it for today, I would say. It has been... Uh, an extremely hectic evening we've been going on for longer than was initially planned we've had a red flag and a race restart probably one of the most like one of the major incidents i've seen on track here at toga and all i can say is thanks everybody for stopping by i think the next event that will be live streamed here uh, as goes for racing events is probably the Rookie Wednesdays I might see you guys on Thursday for the Porsche Cup if not then I will definitely see you guys next week again for the third round of the Driver Swap Cup so major thanks to everybody for stopping by today and I will see you all throughout the week goodbye <laughs> <laughs>